Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ramesh. I'm co-founder and CEO of Biusen. Uh, what basically we are doing, we'll dive into that and uh, brief about my background, right? Uh, so just to relate my work to the theme of uh, Dream Big Simple Mind. Uh, so I come from a background which is very rural, right? I think it's very trendy that everyone from rural background are making out it's really good. Uh, so similar kind of background and uh, probably till 11th I didn't know about what is an IIT. But however, the journey is such a way that you know you keep getting an opportunity and if you really bang on it, uh, the end result would be really good. So this is an outcome of a our journey of six years at IIT Madras, which we, uh, you know, during that journey, I have been involved in developing several drinking water related technologies, and this is what we are pursuing right now. So we'll speak more about the water, more on the drinking water, and then specifically about water generators. So I think, uh, all of you so, what do you know about atmospheric water generator? Kya? Okay, no. Imagine karo ki we, the whole Mathura is not getting water. Now, we have to get water from Mathura. So, we can put these machines and power by solar light and we can actually make water. If, let's say we need 1 million liter of water. So, we can make this water from air and then give it to the Mathura. So that is what atmospheric water generators are there. See, if we look into, you know, why do we need it, we'll have to look at the background of water. See, in India, we have 18% of global population, but we only have 4% of resources, uh, fresh water resources available to us. And that data itself says that we are already in deep problem. Now, with the 4% of the fresh water problem that we are having, uh, we are further contaminating it. And it, it is an estimate that by 2030, 40% of India will not have access to clean drinking water. And 70% of surface water will be completely contaminated. So if I were to give you an example, right? In Karnataka, every day we are dumping approximately 2,300 million liters of sewage water into rivers. The city of Chennai alone dumps around 230 million liters of water into rivers. So you can see, you know, what is the scale that we are polluting the surface water available to us. Now, what we are doing today? So, so I think everyone, so you, you are here. If I talk about the water that you have drank today or that you have been drinking, it has gone through this process. So first, what we are doing? We take this water from a polluted river or groundwater, which is already contaminated. And from there, we transport this water via lorry tankers or via piping. Now, this mode of transportation itself is a problem. Like if you have to transport this water through pipes, let's say if it's a statistic that in Delhi Jalpur, if we are sending 100 million liter of water from Delhi Jalpur, the houses only get 48 million liter of water. 52 percent of water gets lost during the pipe transportation. Now, so what we are doing? We are contaminating continuously the resources. We are transporting this water by means which is not sustainable. And after transporting this water, be it university or at home level, we pass it through an RO. Now, RO if it's a domestic house will reject three fourths of water. If it's an university which we are doing at a bigger scale, we'll send back that reject water back to the ground. Now, what that water is doing in the ground is, it is further inducing the heavy metal contamination. And if you are doing RO at a like, little larger scale, at mega scale, we are throwing that reject water back to ocean. And there, we are threatening the aqua life. So now, at this step, we are again not sustainable. We are having our environmental footprint. Once we do that, we pack this water into glass, maybe it's a 500 ml glass bottle or a 20 liter jar. Now this jar itself has a lot of carbon footprint. 
the plastic where it's packaged, this plastic is getting released into our water and we are drinking it. So I can say like almost all the guests here today had, I'm not not a comment on the, uh, the host, but the, the thing is that the plastic, the very nature of plastic is such a way that if you are drinking water in plastic, like including me, I drink plastic today. <coughs> so that is the uh, implication on health that we are having. So if we look at the grander perspective, of macro perspective, our resources have collapsed. 70% of resource we will deplete by 2030. And if you look at 2047, we will deplete more than 90. Our means of transportation not sustainable, means of purification not sustainable, means of storing water again not sustainable. So, what is the matter? If we have 20 years of life, we will be basically drinking water either which will be treated from sewage or from atmosphere. Because our existing, our rivers will really become sewage. Like they will only transport sewage from Delhi to the ocean, like the whole Gangetic belt. So, this is an alternate source where we are looking at key for meeting our drinking water requirement. We will shift to this. Now, uh, sitting in morning, Nimat was here. Nimat was emphasizing more on the environmental perspective how can we keep our existing infrastructure alive so that we don't really need to use these resources. However, the way we are going ahead, I think while working on the aspect of environmental, working on these kind of technologies are much needed. Because now if you look at a business in Chennai, if a business in Chennai, if an establishment does not get water, their operations are completely disturbed and, and it results in the business losses. So this is a demand of future. So we are deep, um, starting working on this atmospheric water. Now, if you look at it, I give you a data of what atmospheric water is, right? So in our earth, we have river on surface, we have river on oceans also, but similarly we have river of humid humidity in our in our climate also. So at any point of given time. We have approximately 1.4 million 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 liters of drink water content available, and this water content keeps getting replenished every time. So sitting in Mathura, if I take out one million liter of water after six days, that whole the the water content which I have taken out will be replenished because there's a global air current which rotates around the earth and keep making, make sure that the, the humidity content from the oceans are coming onto the land area. So just to put this number into perspective, if we collect all the water from atmosphere, tomorrow we will get more water, but the water which we have collected to every person on earth, we can give a trillion liter of water. So that much of water plus renewable assurance is there in our atmosphere. So what we are doing? So basically, we are capturing it using condensation methods. There are other methods available. However, considering the constants of real state, the space best utilization, we do active condensation, where we use refrigerant system and cool down the temperature of a surface. So basically, I think everybody has seen, if we pour cold water into any glass, condensation will happen. Now, it depends key, how, what would be the rate of condensation that would depend on the surface of that glass. Uh, if I pour the same water in a, a plastic bottle, the rate of condensation will be different. If I pour that same water in a ceramic bottle or a metal bottle, the rate of condensation is going to be different because the condensation is a phenomena which is very much dependent on the surface property, chemical property and the surface topography or morphology. So what we are doing here, we take this refrigeration setup and we cool down temperature below dew point and the surface where which we are cooling below dew point, we replicate cactus morphology. Now cactus is a plant which lives in desert and it's a plant which makes its own water in the desert. Like nobody goes it waters it. So it will make its own water in the night time 
and it will live its whole lifespan and it is able to do so because it has that particular morphology conicals we have seen this thorns are there on the cactus plant so now that thorns are there and again there are microstructures on top of it and that allows us to ca capture water from atmosphere we replicate same structure and then make these atmospheric water generators so now we have these five varieties of atmospheric water generators which can make 40 liters of water per day to 2200 liters of water per day and with that we have done 72 projects across india in 21 cities and as of now 2400 people are using this water using this we have saved approximately 4. Point, we have generated 4.8 million liters of drinking water and we have saved 24 million liters of groundwater to put that in perspective main mathura ko do din ka groundwater de sakta hu pura itna pani humne bacha diya now problem here is see this whole race is again going back to how sustainable can we be right uh, so whatever we do in the end, transaction is actually happening with the environment the transaction is not really a monetized it's, a, it's not really in terms of indian currency or it's not in currency but the real transaction is happening that what is the environmental cost of any activity that i do so what could be minimum environmental cost of a liter of water that we drink so the process which i told you today in that we are wasting water we have carbon footprint we have microplastic into it we have a lot of transportation involved now with atmospheric water generators we can make water a point of use itself let us if i want to utilize water here we can make water here so that we have zero mile water transportation so that the inefficiency of transportation is completely eliminated there is no plastic into it every liter of water that is made by atmospheric water generator saves approximately six liter of groundwater so you have also become water negative your carbon your water footprint is negative your carbon footprint is associated with the energy that you take to make a liter of water now our effort is to further minimize it this is the best that we are doing that we can make a liter of water by spending 0.27 unit and this is the carbon footprint that is associated with the liter of water that we make now if we can minimize this then atmospheric water generators will truly be a sustainable technology like it will be sustainable to the extent that we can say that every liter of water i am drinking i am basically saving environment so the more i drink more benefit to the environment and that is that is a really good statement that you would like to make now what we can really do uh, you know this is something significant that has been done but what really can be done further so the question that or one thing that i aspire to do is that make materials in such a way that they can collect water from atmosphere automatically in the day, night time so you can see some water molecules getting trapped into these materials and the moment you turn these materials expose these materials to sunlight they release water so we are in pursuit of making such materials where we can capture clouds into them in the night and then release those clouds back again in the daytime allowing us to have zero carbon emission zero water footprint zero microplastics and uh, zero transportation of water wouldn't that be a good future to live in with that I thank you all of you and the water that is keeping us alive and the water that is available in the air which is ensuring that we can breathe this water. So thank you all of you and thank you the water village around.